Okay, here's our third video. We're going to move on to chapter 4.2, which talks about finding the equation of the line. So again, here's our example from the last video. We have how fast the golf club was hit and how far the ball went. And again, we calculated the correlation 0.94, which is a pretty strong relationship. So now what we want to do is we want to find an equation of a line that relates the two variables. Okay, and what we can do with that once we have that equation is we could predict what we would expect future values to be. And again, we know it's not perfect, but this is an example of a statistical model. The idea that we're going to use the data we have to predict future data. And often that's what we want statistics for, right? While it's fine to explain what we had before, predicting the future is usually what we want. Predicting the past isn't nearly as exciting as predicting the future as we do that. Okay, so we could just pick two lines and draw the line between that. And if we do that, um, you don't need to do too much fancy math to see that that line here, this red one, does a better job than the others of doing it. But we still don't know how good um, of a line that is. And um, all we did to calculate those lines, I mean, right, that looks pretty fancy. Um, and you can do that in StatCrunch. It'll calculate the line for any two points for you. But um, all you do is you calculate the slope, rise over run. Hey, look at that. We remember all that cool stuff from algebra class. Math, math, math. Then we use the point slope form, right? Y minus Y1 equals MX minus X1. Again, I know it's rattling inside your brain and you got to pull that out. Um, actually, you don't because we're not going to actually do this very much. Um, and we can do that to calculate and we get a slope and we get an intercept. And you remember that a slope and an intercept is what defines um, the value. So again, connecting those two points that look the best, we find that um, the slope and the intercept can be calculated that way. But we don't want to just connect the best points. We want to find the best line of uh, best fit. And so to do that, we're going to use what we call least squares regression. And the way we do that is we think about the residual. So that is how wrong is each uh, point from that predicted line. So in this case here, this line is perfect for these two points, but all the other ones are above or below. So what we want to do is we want to do least squares regression. So we want to minimize the squared vertical distances that we're going to have here. So again, the residual for each one, we just subtract in a vertical direction. We could use the shortest point, but to do that, we have to use trig. And as you know, we all try to avoid trig wherever we can. And we calculate those distances there. Um, this is actually hard to draw, so that's why I'm extra glad I'm stealing her slides to draw all those vertical lines on the plot. And we can calculate how much those are. So the residual is just the actual point minus the predicted point. We put a little hat on the predicted point, a carrot, um, to show that it's a predicted value. And we call that amount the residual. So the residual is just this guy minus that guy. Okay, so in this particular case, the residual is 4.7, just because that's here to here. And again, we just have to subtract the value that we calculated from the value that the point actually had. If we do that for all of them, what we do is in order to find the line of best fit, we want to minimize the squared residual. So again, we're going to square them so we don't have to worry about minus signs. And because we're assuming our data is normal-ish, squared residuals give you these nice mathematical properties. Now, those of you who had calculus would say, gosh, I know how to minimize that. I'm going to take a derivative and do stuff, but this class doesn't expect calculus. So we're just going to work it through and calculate the values out. The value of that equation is right here. So the slope is going to be equal to the correlation times the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x. Now again, it seems like it just comes out of magic, but it comes out of calculus, which is kind of the same thing. And then the intercept is the mean minus v1x. And we can find that actually just using point slope form. The book actually walks through the calculations for that if you're interested. Now a couple nice things. The line always crosses the point x bar, y bar. So in fact, if you calculate the slope and use x bar, y bar, you'll get that equation of the line very quickly from that. More interesting is that the correlation coefficient, if it's positive, the slope is going to be positive. If the correlation is negative, the slope is going to be negative. And again, um, we're going to go ahead and do this uh, with the data that we have. So um, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it here back on my sheet. So we have all the values here. Here are our mean and standard deviations. Here is our R. 
So the slope is going to be equal to R times the ratio of the two standard deviations. So it's going to be S sub Y divided by S sub X. And if we do that, we get 3.166. 0.17, I guess was rounding, which is good. That's what she got, right? So again, we just take this correlation multiplied by the ratio of the two standard deviations. Then we're going to calculate um, our intercept. And remember, the intercept is where it would be for zero. And of course, that's kind of a weird thing here because zero is really far away from our speeds. Okay, and again, we're going to look and remember our formula. The um, y bar minus the slope times x bar. So y bar minus the slope times x bar. Okay, so again, annoying to do, but not hard. We get minus 55.8. Now that again is a funny thing because again, if you're imagining the predictive value of that, how fast is a how far is a golf ball that you hit zero miles an hour going to go? And the answer is minus 56 yards, which is goofy. Okay, and that has to do with extrapolation, which is that predictions that aren't near your data are going to be hard to do, right? All of our data is um, right there close. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to predict how far the ball travels when the swing speed is 103 miles per hour. That's just an example we had. So for x equals 103, the value of our equation is going to be slope times our x, which is 103, plus our intercept. And that's going to give us a value of 270 yards. I should say I don't ever hit a golf ball this far. Um, and oops. And we get 270. Now, the residual then is how far it actually went was 274, so we can calculate the residual 3.7. Okay, and again, here's the plot so we can see how it goes. And this line is actually pretty close to that one we drew before, but it's a little bit different because what it does is it takes these squared differences and it minimizes those across all of our values. Okay, so now just a couple more things. Um, in StatCrunch, we can do this. You can do it in Minitab. You can do it in Excel. So let me pull that up. So here's our StatCrunch. If we go over here uh, to our calculations, we can go here to regression. We can do a simple linear model, which is what we're doing here. We're going to make our speed is our x variable and our distance is our y variable. We could group it. We're not going to do that here. Um, you could fix the intercept equal to a value, but we're not going to do that. Um, you could do a transformation if you wanted to do that, and it's going to just make a nice little plot for you here. It will give you the residual plots and even give you a little calculation of them. But in any case, here we go. It's just going to calculate for us. And here you can see that it calculated the mean and the variance, the, I'm sorry, the slope and the intercept for those. Okay, and we'll talk about what some of those other numbers mean. It did calculate the R value. <clears throat> and I just want to get to the very last concept of this section, which is the idea of R squared. R squared is called the coefficient of determination. It seems like that's a different thing, but R squared really is just R squared in this case. But what R squared means is it's the percent of variation explained by the variable. So 88% of the variation in how far the ball travels can be explained by how fast the club is going when it's hit. That does mean that there's some error. We know the line wasn't perfect, but if we do that model, we can uh, get 88% um, of the variation, which is pretty darn good as we do that. Um, here's the output from a TI calculator, um, and uh, we can get it from there. Again, R squared for linear regression is just R squared. We actually use the term R squared for other calculations. If you take ANOVA, if you take one of the fancier stat classes, we're going to use R squared to mean fancier models, but we always convert it back to this kind of R squared. So in our case, again, R squared is just R squared. I can say it more times, but it doesn't sound any less silly as we do that. Okay, so again, we can interpret the slope, how far 
if we go one mile per hour faster, how much harder, how much further do we think the ball is going to go? The slope for us is 3.1, so that means if we go up one mile per hour, we're going to go 3.1 yards farther on average, right? Again, it won't be perfect, but it'll be the best we have. The intercept would be what it means for zero, but often that's goofy. And this idea that data is like a line might only be true within a small range of values. And again, we can see that it doesn't really make sense. So often we can think about it, but we really don't want to think about it very hard. I'll do another example in class that's even a little bit sillier than this one. Okay, so again, this idea that if you're outside of the slope of the model, we don't know what's going to happen. And again, that's true in the positive or the negative direction. Right, because again, predicting things outside is hard. There's a whole branch of statistics uh, called time series, which really looks at predicting the future, but it is fraught with peril and has lots of worries because, of course, the future hasn't happened yet. So it has all kinds of assumptions built in. And if you take something like econometrics where you're trying to predict stock values, of course, using past performance to predict future is not a good idea, which is why they even put that little warning on um, all those commercials for stockbrokers and stuff. So, okay, that's a quick introduction to chapter four. I will do a kind of a different example in class and work through things a little bit differently. Of course, your book has a nice description of it as well. So, awesome. So with that, that's chapter four and uh, we'll see you.